Hey everyone, welcome to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College up here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, today we're going to give you a little bit of a shop tour, what we have going on. Um, you can kind of see the different environments that we have set up for our students um, and how we kind of cater to what the industry needs in our area. So come along with us and see what we got going on. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Schmelzer. I'm one of the instructors here at NWTC. Uh, I teach our machine tool CNC techniques programs. Uh, I'm going to walk you through our shop, just kind of show you some of the different areas of the shop and what the students are, uh, are going through learning here at NWTC. Uh, when you first enter our shop, uh, you're going to walk into a small staging area here. Uh, this is where the students are going to prepare for the day in the lab, uh, where they get on all their safety gear, safety glasses, boots, uh, discard any loose clothing uh, so they can uh, work in the environment here. You can see, uh, you know, we got our wash basin uh, area for tool storage. Every one of our students are required to have an, a, a basic uh, uh, set of tools for the trade, uh, starting off with the apprentice toolbox and just some of your basic measuring equipment, layout equipment, uh, and so forth. So you can see, uh, you know, all the students are able to lock up their equipment. Uh, also in this area, we got all of our uh, material safety data sheets uh, for everything that's located in our shop. Uh, so that's made available to them also. So that's this area. We're going to move forward into the shop here and I'll show you the rest. At the front of our lab here, uh, in the first year shop, uh, we have all of our tool cabinets. Uh, all of our tool cabinets just hold everything uh, over and above what the students are required to purchase for this class. You know, a lot of uh, basic mechanic style tooling into our uh, collets, tap holders, uh, some of our manual lathe cutting tools, uh, and then into some of our more elaborate uh, measuring equipment. Uh, you know, you pull open our drawers, a lot of stuff you're going to see is all shadowed. Allows us instructors to be able to see uh, what the students have checked out at the time. So at the end of the class it can get returned. So just a few examples of some of the stuff we have in our uh, tool cabinets, just basic measuring equipment. Uh, from there, we're going to move into our milling machine area. I'm over here in our milling machine area of the shop. Uh, we have a series of uh, different types of universal machines here that the students go through and do, do different operations, different setups uh, on certain projects that they're required to do for class here. One thing you will notice in our shop is we do cluster all of our machines together. So all of our milling machines, our lathes, uh, grinders, and so on are all in uh, similar groupings, similar to what you'd see in a, in a machine shop out in industry. Uh, another thing you'll notice by all of our machines, we do have shadow board, work tables for the students to place their toolbox, uh, and it has all your basic tools needed at each individual machine specific for that machine. Uh, and then of course all of our cutting tools located in carts and racks uh, throughout the, the area over here also. So this is our milling machine area. I'm here in our lathe area of the shop. Uh, you'll, you'll notice we have a series of different types of conventional lathes. Uh, the students have the opportunity to work on all different names and brands, uh, vintage. Uh, they get the opportunity to set up a different type of work holding devices, different tool setups. Uh, one thing you'll notice again, we have all of our shadow boards, work tables, centrally located in between all the machines with our cleaning station here with our COVID uh, situation we're going through. Uh, one thing you'll notice with our uh, cluster that we have here, this is one thing that helps uh, allow our students uh, to work together with other students in class on, the, on similar projects. Uh, they're all kind of going through the same thing here, so it allows them to uh, uh, work with each other through problems, uh, kind of support that cohort group that we uh, offer here at NWTC. Um, so this is our lathe department. We'll move on to our large milling machine area. I'm over here in our large milling machine area. You'll see we got some pretty heavy duty uh, conventional milling machine equipment. Again, from various age uh, vintage, uh, some of these from uh, uh, very long ago into our some of our newer machines we've recently purchased. Uh, the students get a pretty good variety of uh, setups on these machines, everything working in vices, 
to uh, different various fixturing for some of the projects that they do, uh, utilizing face mills, hog mills, uh, and other types of cutting tools. You'll see uh, we even have a setup over here on our horizontal machines, uh, getting into uh, working with overarm supports and arbors, uh, doing different slitting and grooving operations on various projects so they get some experience uh, setting up uh, that type of operation also. Again, over to uh, some of our newer machines over here, uh, doing some large face milling operations, uh, and back to our uh, other horizontal machine here. Again, doing some uh, overarm support uh, operations using arbors and slitting saws. Uh, behind these machines, you'll find uh, our drill press area. Uh, first project that the students encounter uh, in class here is they work on the drill press, doing layout and simple drill press operations, everything from drilling, reaming, tapping, counter bore, counter sinking, uh, and so on. And then uh, just some simple uh, pedestal grinders, deburring equipment uh, located against the back wall also. Off to the side here, uh, we do uh, have a cutoff saw. Uh, the students are required to do a lot of uh, work on their uh, projects cutting off from bar stock. Uh, a lot of our bar stock comes in uh, different, le different lengths from 8 to 10 feet, so they uh, have to uh, do the operation for cutoff on their projects also. Over from here, we're going to move over to our grinding area of the shop. I'm over here in our uh, surface grinding area of the shop. Uh, we have uh, three surface grinders uh, that the students uh, get to work on. Uh, anything from uh, flat surface grinding to angled uh, grinding uh, using various setups, uh, angle plates, uh, V-blocks, uh, and different types of uh, setups on those machines also. Uh, we do have a few projects, uh, you know, behind these grinders we have heat treat ovens. Uh, the students are required to go through a few heat treating processes on certain projects uh, to a desired hardness. And then again after that they come over here uh, for finished machining on uh, these machines here. Again, we have some shadow board work tables over here with different types of uh, equipment required for just the surface grinders. Uh, so that's all located for them, changing out wheels, uh, cleaning tables, uh, deburring parts and random setup equipment for that also. We've got our inspection table back here so the students can uh, come right off the machine, do their in-process inspection on all their components to verify uh, their spec. So that pretty much sums up uh, our conventional machines for our first year program. Uh, we're going to transition over to the CNC area for our first year students. I'm in the CNC area of our first year machine tool program. Uh, you'll see we have a, a various uh, different types of vertical machining centers for the students. Um, again, they go through all different types of uh, setups programming operations on their projects required in this class. Uh, we do have uh, all lined up in a, in a row. allows the instructor a good view of all the students uh, to uh, assist them as needed. Uh, we do have one larger machining center, a little more horsepower for some of the bigger projects uh, that the students encounter. Uh, in the first year program, the students do get into basic handwriting of G-code. Uh, they also get uh, some exposure to some entry-level CAM software also. Allows them to have a little bit of mix of the uh, handwritten G-code programming, CAM software programming alongside. So this is our milling machine area, our CNC milling area. Uh, we'll go over to the turning center area. Over in this part of the shop uh, is our CNC turning center area for the first year students. Uh, you will notice uh, they get some experience on a couple of different controls. Uh, pretty much your standard industry, industry control that they get to work on on these uh, various tool room ways here. Uh, again, they get into a real basic entry level setup and programming on these machines. They do uh, conversational uh, programming on these machines uh, and then uh, run through a series of different projects. You know, all your basic machining operations, turning, threading, grooving, and boring operations on these machines. From here, we're going to go and look at our second year program shop. That's our CNC technician program, and I'll take you over there. We're over in our second year uh, CNC technician program shop. 
Uh, one thing you'll see is we're pretty much all CNC on this side of the shop. We do have some conventional machines that they do uh, some simple operations on. Um, but we do have a variety of three axis CNC machining centers. And then also we get into some multi axis too. In this machine over here, you'll see our five axis uh, trunking setup. Uh, the students go through and they do some real simple uh, G code programming, handwriting code for that five axis setup along with some CAM software also uh, incorporating that into some of their projects. Um, again, we're all clustered over here, similar to what you would see in industry. We have all of our machining centers grouped in one area, and then our turning centers in another area. Again, going back to our shadow boards, we have all of our machine-specific tooling located at each uh, machine, ready for the students so they're not uh, wandering around class looking for stuff. Um, our machining center here, we're going to uh, turn around and we do have one large uh, CNC horizontal machining center located behind you. Um, this right here again, we do get into a variety of different controls, uh, it makes the students a little more versatile on uh, what they're running. So again, our large dual pallet, four axis horizontal machining center. Uh, real similar to what a lot of these students are going to encounter in industry. So we do some real basic setups on this, uh, utilizing tombstones, vices, chucks, and then we get into some modular fixturing on uh, some castings. So give them a little bit of experience, uh, different types of setups on this machine also. From here, we're going to go over to our turning center area. Over in this area of our shop is our CNC turning centers. All of our machines uh, come equipped with uh, C-axis live tooling. Um, our students start off real basic uh, uh, lathe programming. Uh, they go through all of the G-code programming. Uh, and we get into some advanced CAN cycles along with macro programming on these machines. Uh, and then later on in the semester, they do uh, some live tooling on these machines also. A um, couple of different varieties of controls again. Uh, again, makes them a little more versatile and uh, what they're learning here at the college. Uh, from here, behind these machines, I'll take you back to some of our larger turning centers. This machine right here is one of our newer additions to uh, the program here. Uh, this incorporates live tooling along with Y-axis and C-axis capabilities and it's incorporated with a parts catcher so we can simulate some production runs on this particular machine. Off to the right hand side here is uh, another new machine we've recently acquired. Uh, another machine with live tooling, C-axis, and uh, with the addition of a sub-spindle. So now uh, we're looking at progressing into uh, done-in-one operations, part exchanges, uh, and a little more complex programming on this machine. From here, I'm going to take you over to some of our non-traditional machines in our program, our EDM equipment. I'm over here at our Sinker EDM machine. Uh, part of our second year program incorporates uh, some tool and die experience for the students. Uh, one being stamping die. Uh, construction which gives the students some experience on building a stamping die for sheet metal work uh, along with uh, an injection mold which the students uh, get to actually set up and run uh, to check its performance. So on this machine here a lot of times we'll go through and machine our electrodes out of uh, graphite to get the specific cavity that the students are looking for in their mold and then they will set it up and burn that cavity in. So some basic programming and setup on uh, electrodes, uh, EDM equipment over here on the sinker. We'll go over to the left here to our wire EDM machine. Again, getting back to uh, the stamping die part of our program, uh, a lot of the students will go through and pre-machine some of their components, uh, go through the heat treat process on various tool steels, and then come back to this machine uh, to perform any operations after the part has been heat treated. So again, basic programming on this, the students all go through using both handwritten G-code and CAM software uh, to produce any parts that they're uh, going to make on this machine. Directly behind this machine, we do have an EDM drill. Uh, 
uh, the students go through this machine a lot of times for burning out broken taps um, but they also use this for creating start holes in any components that they're going to be uh, machining over on the wire EDM machine so small hole EDM drill uh, over here in our conventional area of the uh, shop, we got some of our uh, surface grinders. Uh, over here in the second year, the students get to experience some cylindrical grinding. Um, so part of their mold components, they have to produce, uh, go through the heat treat operation, then come back to this machine for finished grinding. Uh, they do a uh, setup on OD grinding on this machine. And then of course we have the attachment for ID grinding so the students get some experience doing some ID grinding on this machine also. And again behind, uh, similar to our first year uh, program, we have our surface grinding area and then just a couple of manual lathes and mills uh, in the back area over here. In this part of the shop, uh, this is where the students get to actually try out their plastic injection molds. We have a plastic injection molding machine here. Uh, so the students, uh, after they go through all the different operations of building, constructing their mold, uh, they're gonna come over here and set the mold up in this machine and go through a trial run with it. And uh, basically evaluate the performance of their mold, how everything is working and functioning. And then if the finished parts come out to a specification, uh, all the students come up with their own design for these molds. So they find a, a specific part that they want to make out of plastic and they build the mold for it. They go through the design process of creating all the cores and cavities for the specific parts and then uh, bring that into the CAM software where they'll do various machining operations, whether it be 3D, 2D, uh, to create any kind of components for their molds. Over in this area of the shop, this is our stamping press. Uh, again, similar to our mold machine, the students uh, go through the process of building a stamping die, uh, whether it be just a simple uh, punch die uh, for producing parts or getting into some more complex forming. Uh, again, that's up to the student. They come up with their own design and then they go through and machine all the different components for the die. And then once it's finished complete, they'll come over here to the press and we'll set it up on this machine and go through uh, a couple of cycles to again verify how the tool works, how it performs, and if it makes the parts uh, to specification. This was kind of an interesting project that a couple of the students got together and made uh, where they're stamping out some little sheet metal cars. Uh, again, just kind of a fun project being able to see how all the different components assemble, uh, go together, and then it incorporated some plastic injection molding also for the wheels on this car. So, fun little project. Again, uh, just being able to try out their tools once they produce them to see how they perform. I'm over here in our tool area of the shop. Uh, this is where we store all of our tool holders for our machining centers. Uh, one thing that we've incorporated in the program here is uh, some color coding for our tool block tables here along with the holders. Everything is color coded. Uh, color coded by different sizes uh, for end mills. Uh, and then we group all of our uh, face mills, boring bars, drill chucks, collet holders, all in other areas. This definitely speeds up the time uh, that, you know, the students are limited in the shop here. So they're able to come back here, identify tool holders rather quickly than uh, shuffling through just random tool holders. So just one of the things, color coding everything helps speed that up. Uh, next to all of our holders here is our tool cabinets, real similar to our first year where we have uh, everything kind of grouped. Uh, and shadow boards uh, again so it allows me the instructor to be able to see if anything's checked out by the students and of course any of our drills and mills uh, that the students are needing for jobs are stored in these cabinets also. Uh, one thing we got in the shop here too is our job board. Uh, this is visual for the students when they're out in the shop they're constantly evaluating this. Uh, of course we have all of our weeks of our semester and there are multiple classes that they're in the lab uh, and then all the required projects. What this does is it allows them to see their timeline as they're going through uh, throughout the semester to kind of evaluate where they are in regards to finishing their projects. It's just a quick visual. Uh, I've seen this utilized in some shops before where they got multiple jobs going on on different machines. Uh, it allows to keep track of the, the workflow in the shop. So just something that we uh, incorporate 
with our students here also. Um, here in our metrology lab, uh, this is used by uh, both first year and second year students. Um, we go everything from uh, basic surface plate inspection. Uh, we also have optical comparator uh, measurement in here. And then you'll see some various types of coordinate measuring machines, everything from our uh, coordinate me measuring machine in the corner over here uh, to our roamer arms. Um, so the students do get a, a variety of different types of inspection uh, training in here also. Uh, once all their projects are finished, they're required to come in here and basically do uh, an inspection on everything to verify everything needs uh, specification. Uh, and also uh, hardness uh, requirements too when we get into some heat training. So we do some hardness testing in here also. So this is our metrology area. Uh, the last portion of our shop, uh, over here by our uh, machine simulators. Again, this allows the uh, students to uh, take some of their handwritten G-code programs or their uh, CAM-generated programs, bring them over to the controls and uh, verify that everything is correct. Uh, there's no alarms, errors that pop up in their code. Uh, this kind of helps eliminate uh, some of the downtime on the machines. Uh, you know, if they're uh, not prepared with their program, that allows someone else to get in and work on the machine. Uh, another new addition to our shop here is our uh, tool presetter. Uh, this allows the students to come through and uh, do some preset measurements on their tools. Uh, it helps uh, save a little time on the machine setup also. So they're able to take and print out all their tool offsets, bring them over to the control, and key them in. So that kind of concludes our uh, tour of our first and second year shops here at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. Uh, if you got any questions or concerns, uh, feel free to call me or email me. Uh, I'll leave uh, my information at the end of this video. Um, or if you want to schedule a tour in person and come through our shop and talk to some of our instructors, uh, you can also check us out at mwtc.edu or like us on Facebook and Instagram.